feature will allow you to essentially get a closer look and magnify your image without actually resizing it. It's sort of like looking at your image through a microscope. When you zoom in, you can better see the changes that you've made. So for example, if we wanted to get a closer look at the blossom on this flower here, you would go down here to this magnifying glass, click on that, click in the area that you want to zoom in on, and then click your mouse and you can zoom in closer. And each time you click on the image, the zoom tool will magnify it by 100%. And keep in mind once again that using the zoom tool does not actually resize the image. It's just zooming in on whatever area you want to focus on. Panning an image is different than zooming in on an image. Panning an image means moving the image to get a better look at different aspects. This is especially helpful if you're working with larger image files. So for example, we're zoomed in here, but what if I wanted to see a different area? You can click right here on the hand tool, click on that, and then click and drag your mouse to pan the image. That way I can focus on different areas, like if I wanted to see this flower instead. If you're using another tool but you need to pan the image while you're using it, you can press and hold down the space bar as you drag your mouse. Now if you want to zoom back out again on your image, click again on the zoom tool. You can go up here and click on that, and then you can zoom out again. You can also click the Alt key on your keyboard to alternate between zooming in and zooming out. So if I want to zoom in again, press, press Alt, get the plus sign to zoom in, release that, get the minus to zoom out. You can switch between those easily. Now when working with Photoshop, there may be times where you need to align graphics, measure certain aspects of an image file, or insert text in line with a graphic. Although you could do these things by just using the appropriate tool, it's a lot easier to create professional images and graphics when you use the rulers, guides, and grids that Photoshop CS6 provides. These features make it easy to align aspects of a web page, for example, or to add text that's perfectly in line with a graphic. We're going to learn about each one of these features individually, and you'll find that they're very simple to use and make working with Photoshop even easier. So let's start with rulers. Rulers appear along the top left sides of the document window where your image appears. And to use those, you'll just go up to View, Rulers, and I've already got mine checked, so they're already visible. You can see the rulers here and here on each side. And these rulers will help you scale images, position graphics, and position selections. They'll be especially useful when you're putting text with a photo like for a greeting card, for example, and if you want to make sure that you perfectly align the text with the image. They can also be helpful when you're going to place two images in one document, such as with a web page. You can use the rulers to place images at the same vertical or horizontal alignment. For example, both might line up on the two-inch line on the vertical ruler. You can see the ruler starts at zero and then goes up from left to right and then top to bottom at the point where the two rulers intersect. To measure an image or any area in the image, you have to move the zero point to the area where you want to measure. So for example, what if we just wanted to measure the flower here? To move the zero point, first place your pointer over the crosshairs in the upper left corner where the rulers intersect. And then you'll click down there and you'll see that it creates the crosshairs there. And then drag the zero point to where you want the new zero point to begin. So for example, if we want it right in the middle of that flower there, we'll drag it there, a line will appear across the image to help you set the point exactly where you want it. So once you've got it where you want it, just release, and you can see that the zeros have changed and you've got your new zero point set. Now if you want to change the units of measure or other preferences, go to Edit, Preferences, Units and Rulers, and then you'll get your different options here. We could use this measurement to determine the size of additional graphics, the text, or use it for placement or alignment. Now let's talk about guides. Guides are a lot like rulers. The big difference is that you don't use them to measure. Instead, you use them to align different aspects of your image, such as text, layers, and so forth. To use guides, go to View, Show, Guide and you can see the guide has appeared. It's the light teal line right here. And you can click on the guide 
and then drag and drop it over your image. This is the vertical guide. A guide is useful if you're placing a couple rows of text. You can use the guide to make sure it's in perfect alignment. If you want to create a horizontal guide, grab and drop from the horizontal ruler. And likewise, you can move that to where you want it to be, and that'll create crosshairs for you. You could use the intersections of the horizontal and vertical guides to place graphics as well. Let's say, for example, that you wanted to place text that begins directly over the flower. The guides would help you accomplish this. If you want to remove the guide, simply drag it off the image or go to View, Show Guides, and uncheck that. And now let's take a look at grids. Grids are non-printable, which means that you can use a grid, leave it in your image, but when you print or save the image, it won't appear to anyone who views it outside of Photoshop. It simply appears as an overlay. You would use a grid to position items or keep symmetry in your design. If you want to view that, just go up to View, Show, and Grid. And now you see our grid appears. To change the measurements used in the grid or other preferences, go to Edit, Preferences, Guides, Grid, and Slices. And then from there, you can change your preferences for the grid. So you can now use the grid to add aspects to the image, place another image or graphic, or whatever you need to do to the image while keeping the symmetry in design. In the image above, for example, you may decide that you wanted to add droplets of water to the leaves on the flower. If you use the grid, you could make sure that the drops were kept equally spaced in your image. And again, if you decide that you no longer want that grid there, you'd go back up to View, Show, and then uncheck the box next to Grid. So now let's talk about undoing changes in the graphic. Let's say, for example, that I colored all over my image and I didn't want that there. I can go up to Edit, Step Backward, and that will undo that. And Photoshop will undo the changes that were made. You can click Step Backward as many times as you want, and Photoshop will undo all the steps that you've taken to edit or modify the graphic or image. However, let's say the last five steps you did, with the first being the most recent, were change color, change image size, create a layer, and crop the image, which are all things we'll learn to do later in this course. So you can see I've altered the image here. You may decide you want to keep the color changes and even keep the new image size, but you might want to get rid of the new layer and the cropped version. If you simply use step backward to do this, you would first have to undo the color and image size, which means you'd have to redo it later. Obviously, that could be a hassle. Instead, you can use the History panel to undo any changes made to the image. To view the History panel, go to Window, History, and click on that, and that opens up your history. In the History panel, you can view all states of your image. Every change you've made to your image created a new state. So, as you can see here, image size is a state click on that and it shows how you've changed that image size. If that's what you want to delete, simply click on that, make sure it's selected, and then click on the trash can here. A dialog box will open asking you if you really want to delete that state. And as long as that's the correct one, go ahead and click yes. So now your image has no longer been resized, but you still have those color changes that you made. Now let's look at the Adjustment Panel. The Adjustment Panel will make it easy for you to adjust the color in your images. It's open by default in the Panel dock, and it looks like this. You can see it says Adjustments. You can click on an Adjustment icon to adjust color. If you hover your mouse above an icon, it will tell you exactly what the icon does. You can see it's changing here, showing us what everything does. And as you can see here, the first icon adjusts brightness and contrast. Now when you click the icon, a Properties panel appears to the left of the panel dock. In it, you'll see sliders that allow you to adjust the brightness and contrast. Simply press and hold your mouse over the slider and drag it to the position you want. So let's use brightness and contrast as an example. We can adjust the sliders. Let's say we want a really bright image with a lot of contrast in it and that gives us the adjustment that we want.
So now our image looks like this. And you can see our options for the properties panels are if you want to toggle the visibility of the adjustment, you can click the eye icon here and that shows you what it looks like before and after the adjustment. You can return to the original adjustment by clicking this arrow here. Or if you decide to delete the adjustment, click the trash can and it will ask you if you want to delete that. Go ahead and click yes and then that removes that. If you want to close the properties panel, just click the double arrow up here and that will remove that. Make sure you take the time to learn the different adjustments you can make to an image's color in the adjustments panel. Experiment and see how they affect your images because there's a lot of different tools you can use there and the best way to learn them is just to play around with it and see what they do. Lastly for this lesson we're going to talk about the note tool. The note tool will allow you to add notes to your image and you can add as many notes as you want. Each note will be note by a note icon. To add a note, go to your toolbox, and the note tool is grouped with the eyedropper tool. So you'll click this downward arrow by the eyedropper and select the note tool. To add a note, click on the area in the image where you want to add the note. So maybe I wanted to add a note that I wanted this flower brightened here, and then I can type my note in. and I can click away from that, close that out, and my note will be invisible the next time.